Hi, this is Craig Hartman for VFDs.com and today we're going to talk about how to buy a variable frequency drive. Now the first thing you want to look at is what you're trying to do. We call that the application. Is it a conveyor, a pump, a compressor, a machine tool? You're going to have to understand that application. And if you talk to a knowledgeable sales associate at VFDs.com, they're going to want to know as much as they can about that application. For instance, if you have a downhole pump, in order to protect the bearings, many downhole pump manufacturers require that you start that in three to four seconds. So the drive will have to have the capability to do that. Another example might be an induced draft fan on a boiler. In that case, they do a soot blow in order to clean the pipes. And during that soot blow, the drive has to go into overload and have enough capability to still maintain negative pressure in the boiler. So the sky's the limit on different types of applications, and the secret is to understand the special requirements of that application. The next thing you're going to want to look at is the motor nameplate. I have a number of motor nameplates in front of me, and you want to look at the motor nameplate. The most important thing we're going to look at is first, three-phase. We always want to use a three-phase motor. Second, you're going to want to make sure that the voltage on the nameplate matches the voltage on the output of the variable frequency drive. And finally, you want to look at the full load amps, the FLA of the nameplate. Do not size your motor and your drive by horsepower. Look at the amps on the nameplate and make sure that the amps on your variable frequency drive is as high or higher than the amps on the motor nameplate. The next thing you want to do is carefully look at the speed range. Now, motors come in various capacities, various qualities, and some are VFD rated, some are not. For more information, see our other videos on VFD rated motors. What you want to do is make sure that the VFD has, or excuse me, the motor has 1600 volt high spike wire in it, and that is rated for the speed range that you need. With motors, they generally have the cooling fan on the shaft of the motor, and as they cool down, the, as they slow down, the cooling fan goes slower, and therefore the motor gets hotter. So if you have an inexpensive rolled steel motor, you may have very limited ability to reduce your speed. If you have a good quality cast iron motor with service factor, then you may be able to go down much lower and still get good torque out of your motor without overheating it. There's two reasons why motors fail. The insulation fails or the bearing fails, and heat can do both. Now the next thing you want to look at is how are you going to control a variable frequency drive. Here's a couple of keypads or parameter units, a very simple one or an advanced one. I really like these advanced ones. Their cost in comparison to the whole drive package is very low, and they give you advanced diagnostics, advanced monitoring, and many other features. Now you can start and stop the VFD from here. You can control the speed entirely from the keypad. If that's okay, that's all you need. On the other hand, if you want to control the drive remotely, most people use analog and digital signals. A simple dry contact, you wire it to the drive, close the contact and it starts, open the contact and it stops. In order to control the speed, you'll have an analog speed reference. This would be a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, 0 to 5 volts, 0 to 10 volts. For instance, 10 volts would cause the drive to go full speed, 0 volts, 0 speed, and 5 volts would be half speed. Now the next thing we want to look at is the enclosure that the drive goes in. This drive could be mounted right on the wall, and if you have a clean room, that may be the way that you want to go. If you want your drive to last a long time, keep it cool and keep it clean, and the best way to go is to mount the drive inside a, an enclosure that has a positive pressure ventilated system with filters. And if you change those filters periodically, the drive will stay clean and it will last two, three, four times longer than simply putting it on the wall. If you have a drive that's mounted outside, you'll need a special outdoor enclosure. Now let's talk a moment about filters. There are output filters and input filters. On the output, if your motor is a VFD rated motor and it's within 100 feet of the drive, you probably don't need anything. On the other hand, if you have many motors on the output of that drive, or if your motor is more than 100 feet from the drive, you'll need a filter. The cheapest type of filter is a load reactor. 
We recommend that you don't use load reactors. In some cases they help, in other cases they make the problem worse. So we do recommend a DVDT filter. DVDT filters take the spikes that come out of variable frequency drives and get rid of those spikes so that you don't have any problems with your motor insulation. Now if you have an expensive downhole pump, those motors are very specialty built and they can be very expensive to replace. In that case, we recommend a full sine wave filter. A sine wave filter will take the pulses from the output of the VFD and actually convert it to a very nice sine wave. They're not cheap, they're quite expensive, but I feel that they are very good insurance for expensive downhole pumps. On the input of drives, you have input filters and they are normally there for harmonics. Now the harmonic standards is IEEE 519 and some drives say they are IEEE 519 compliant. Beware, there is no such thing as an IEEE 519 compliant drive. IEEE 519 is a standard which directs that the current distortion must be within certain limits depending upon the strength of your utility. For more information, see our video on harmonics. So we have various harmonic filters and you can get more information there. Be aware that drives are the number one polluter of power quality and you don't want to pollute the power system in your facility. Finally, we can produce custom enclosures if you would like to put your VFD in an enclosure with PLCs, motor starters, surge protective devices, circuit breakers, you can easily specify a custom enclosure that is custom built for your needs. This is a very quick run through of how to select a VFD. For more information, please feel free to call one of our knowledgeable sales associates at vfds.com or check out our extensive online inventory.